I want to experiment with the digital potentiometer AD5242 using it in place of a real 1 meg potentiometer and try to get it working as an Atari 2600 paddle control 1 meg potentiometer. And since it's a small surface mount part and I need to interface it with the Atari 2600, I made a breakout board with today's sponsor, PCBWay, to make it easier to work with. And then later, if it works as expected, I can design this part into another project. This family of digital pot is available as 10K, 100K, and 1 meg. And they can run from 2.7 to 5.5 volts. Or if it's used for signals that go positive and negative, it can use a split supply, as long as overall it's within 5.5 volts between plus and minus. This one is controlled by I squared C, so I'm using an Arduino Uno to control the wiper position, which has 256 tap points you can move it between from one resistor terminal to the other. The way the digital pots are constructed, they have a bunch of resistors in series with a tap point in the junction between each resistor, one to the next, and then there's transmission gate switches. So a logic decoder circuit will determine which transmission gate to activate so that the potentiometer wiper is located at a specific point between an A terminal and a B terminal on the overall string of resistors. So as you turn transmission gates on and off, you're basically moving the wiper along a potentiometer. But they're not meant to directly replace a potentiometer. The maximum voltage across the terminals is usually whatever your maximum supply is. So in my case, 5 volts. And the maximum current through the potentiometer is usually very small, a couple of milliamps or even less than 1 milliamp. So that has to be kept in mind when putting this in a circuit application to replace a physical resistor. So I found a library for Arduino that controls this pot, and I didn't really have to do much work to get my own demo working. I just opened up a couple of the examples from the library. One of them ramps the wiper position from one end to the other, and another sketch shows how to just directly move the wiper from center, then all the way to one terminal, and then all the way to the other. So I combined all of that into a single sketch to move the wiper from one end to the other and center, and then just ramp from one to the other, and then start over. That way I was hoping I could probe the potentiometer terminals and wiper and check the resistance. But unlike other digital pots where that works and I can actually see the resistor value changing on a resistance measurement, this one was giving me weird results. Keeping in mind, I didn't have anything else hooked up to the potentiometer section of the chip, so there were no weird currents interfering with a resistance measurement. But instead of 1 meg, I was getting between 100-something and 200-something K resistance from end to end, and even then it was changing. It wasn't even staying the same. So that was weird, and I didn't want to get hung up on that, so I made this test circuit instead just to see if it's acting like a 1 meg resistor. So Here's the example circuit. I took a fixed 1 meg to ground on a breadboard, and then from the other terminal of the 1 meg, I put the digital pot wiper and then one of the digital pot terminals to 5 volts. The remaining digital pot terminal was just open, so I was using it as a variable resistor between the minimum, which is probably a wiper resistance around 60 ohms, and max 1 meg as this wiper is moved end to end. So if I do a voltage measurement across that 1 meg resistor, I'm measuring a voltage divider from ground to the junction of these two resistors. So when the pot wiper is all the way down to the far terminal from where I'm connected to 5 volts, I should get a 1 meg resistor in series with a 1 meg resistor, and measuring the voltage at the junction between them should be around half of 5 volts or 2.5. If I move this pot to the center of this 1 meg resistor, I should have 500k between 5 volts and wiper, 
and then that's in series with a 1 meg fixed to ground. So that's a voltage divider with 500k on top and 1 meg on the bottom. So the voltage in the junction should be around 3.3 volts. And when the wiper is all the way at the 5 volt side, there should be negligible resistance on the top and then still 1 meg on the bottom. So we're just measuring across a 1 meg resistor, 5 volts to ground, and we should see 5 volts. And if that holds true, that means this pot is acting like a 1 meg resistor regardless of me not being able to actually measure resistance directly. Here's a test setup with an Arduino Uno communicating over I squared C to control the digital pot. And I have a voltmeter. I have a 1 meg resistor to ground in series with the 1 meg digital pot. So I'm using the meter to measure the voltage from ground to the midpoint of a fixed 1 meg and this variable pot 1 meg. So here's the circuit as set up on the breadboard with the Arduino on I squared C telling this pot to basically ramp from one end to the other and it stays at a couple of fixed positions, maximum, minimum, and middle. Right here is the middle 3.24 volts of this voltage divider circuit. So what we have is the fixed 1 meg resistor to ground on the breadboard. Then we're going to the wiper on the digital pot, which is another 1 meg, and the A terminal is fixed at 5 volts. So as the Arduino tells this wiper to go down from the bottom terminal up toward the A terminal, or at fixed points all the way here, all the way to the other end, and just in the middle, we get three different voltage dividers. Right there we have 2.395, so it's not quite 2.5, but there is a tolerance on the digital pot. When the wiper on the digital pot is in the center, what we are getting is 500k from wiper to 5 volts, and then still a fixed 1 meg to ground, so it looks like this circuit. So we got 3.24 volts, and we're looking for 3.3, so that's close. Then the other possibility is forcing the wiper to be all the way up at the A terminal. So basically the wiper is connected to 5 volts and we just get what looks like the fixed 1 meg to ground and also going straight to 5 volts. And right here we see 5 volts when we're putting the wiper all the way up at the 5 volt terminal. So then the wiper is just being told to sweep from the one terminal toward the other. So we're seeing the voltage ramp up as this voltage divider resistance changes. So it looks like we are getting the behavior of a one meg digital pot. And now to use this digital potentiometer as an Atari paddle control, this one's actually a driving control. It's a different internal circuit, but it looks the same. So the paddle has a button and then a one meg potentiometer and this has the 9-pin Atari 2600 connector for the joystick port. So ultimately what I want to do is control the Atari 2600 paddle over Bluetooth. So I'm going to need a digital 1 meg pot to replace the physical pot. So aside from the fact that this is a button to ground and then the 1 meg pot, the way it actually works on the Atari 2600 from what I read it's not reading an analog input voltage to see the position of the pot. It's using a digital pin. So the way the 1 meg pot is wired inside the paddle, there's just a connection between 5 volts and what gets connected on the Atari to a digital input, but there's an RC circuit in the path. So there's a 1.8K resistor in series, and then a 68 nano capacitor to ground going to the input port. So when it's time for software to read the paddle position, the Atari will ground that port, discharging the capacitor, and then go back to being an input, and the capacitor is going to start charging through that 1.8K resistor, as well as the paddle connected to 5 volts. So depending what the resistance is on the 1 meg pot in the paddle, it'll control how long it takes the capacitor to charge to a point where it switches the digital input from a logic low to a logic high. So the game software has to measure the time it takes for the input to transition to a high, then it knows where the paddle is approximately positioned. 
So I want to start by connecting this one meg pot and a push button on a breadboard to the Atari joystick port, use the breakout game which uses a paddle, and see if I can position the object on the screen. And if so, then I want to connect this digital one meg pot with the same demo sketch, just going to a couple of fixed positions on the wiper and then scrolling the wiper from one end to the other. And I should be able to see the object on the screen scrolling across the bottom. If so, then I know once I'm ready over Bluetooth, I should be able to hook this up and use some other controller as a paddle. It's going to be hard to get everything on camera, so I'm just zoomed in now. We have the Atari 2600 with Breakout. So it uses a paddle, which has one button to start releasing the ball, and then the potentiometer to move the line on the screen back and forth to try and catch the ball. I don't have a paddle, so I plugged in a 9-pin D-sub and used one of my previous breakout boards to get this on a breadboard. And I've got a 1-meg pot and a push button going to the correct pins for a paddle. So now we can see the screen, but we can't see the breadboard circuit. But I'll just show releasing the ball, then controlling the paddle, which I can't do because I'm not left-handed. I can't... oh! Uh, okay, so the potentiometer is working. I'll just let it go. Panning down so we can sort of see both. So I'll have to try to coordinate this. So the potentiometer works. Oh, it's speeding up. Okay, no good. Now I want to try and get the digital pot in here. It's not going to do anything except the same as the existing sketch. It'll move the paddle along based on the resistance. So all I want to know is, can I control the paddle with the digital pot? Now the Arduino circuit is hooked up. The paddle is right here, and then it just shot down to the very minimum as the sketch is doing. It didn't do the center position I was expecting, but eventually it will start counting and setting the wiper, sliding that paddle back up here, and it will repeat. So it's moving it the way the sketch is saying, except I don't know right now why doesn't it jump to the middle. It just goes end to end. So there may be a simple reason for that once I look further into it, but I am able to go from min to max. So it looks like the digital one meg pot is behaving in a way that Atari 2600 can recognize it as a paddle. Now I just have to figure out the fine details, maybe do some other test sketches like try to go 25, 50, and 75 percent before jumping to 100. Just see if I can make it go directly where I want. So now that I know I can use this digital pot to replace a 1 meg physical pot in an Atari 2600 paddle controller, I can put this into another design in a larger future project.